the six characteristics that I think made me successful that I think can also help you be successful and really differentiate people from people that are successful with whatever it is they want to do and people that just wish they did what they want to do. So let's get started. Number one, I never allowed myself to stop learning. Whenever I had an opportunity to learn something new, I would always take it. And not all the learning is book learning. I, I would be the first one to tell you that I'm not really big in having to go back and take a class for everything because let's face it, as a working adult, as an adult in general, as a person that is adulting, I don't have time to go back to school and try to learn new things all the time. But that's not the only way that you learn. Sometimes you learn by going to seminars. A lot of times at work, they'll have different training opportunities that you can learn from. LinkedIn, and I know this isn't a business channel, but uh, LinkedIn has a whole host of opportunities for you to learn a bunch of different materials, whether it's around business, whether it's interpersonal, whether it's around leadership, a whole host of things. You have the opportunity to learn from your friends. The beauty of having a broad group of friends is that different people do different things. I had situations that have happened to me recently where I've called up buddies of mine just to get their perspective. And not because I didn't understand the situation, but I was able to understand it a little bit differently. So again, never underestimate the power of continuous learning because people that get to where they need to go, they don't always know how to get there in the beginning. I certainly didn't, but it was that continuous learning that helped me get to the next level. Number two, I've always sold value, not time. It's easy to get caught into the trap, and a lot of us do, that the more time we spend on something, the better something is. But is that really the case? Just because somebody spends a long time on something, what does that really tell you? That means they spend a lot of time on it. Are there things that take a lot of time in order to get them done right? Sure. But it's not about how much time they spent. It's about the fact that they got it right. When you're at work, your boss doesn't necessarily care that you come in and you work 10, 15 hours a day. If your boss is worried about the fact that you come in and work 10 to 15 hours a day, then what you have is a boss, not a leader, which is a whole nother conversation that we won't get into. But it's not about the time that you put into something. It's about the output that you have on, and when you finish it. And so what I've always focused on is if you want something done right, you want something that's going to bring you value, you want something that's going to move the needle, then you call me. If you want somebody that's going to come in and just run the track for the sake of running the track, or as I say, be like the hamster on the hamster wheel, I'm not that guy because I'm going to be efficient with my time. I'm going to figure out what it is that you're trying to accomplish, and I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get it done with a high level of quantity. And I'm sure a lot of you, and let me know in the comments, I'm sure a lot of you get frustrated at work because you'll come together with a great project. You have your efficient time management in terms of how you're going after that project. And then your boss comes up and says, well, it doesn't look like you're doing this. doesn't look like you're doing that. But you're accomplishing everything you want to accomplish. So at the end of the day, it's not about activity. It's about accomplishment. And that accomplishment is a demonstration of value. And I've always focused on value, not time. And are there times where there were individuals that maybe felt differently than I did about it? Sure. But at the end of the day, it wasn't about them. It was about me. It was about delivering value. And so what I was able to do is I became the necessary evil because they knew that in order to get to where they wanted to be, they needed to have me. So they may have said, well, we want you to work 10 hours. We want you to do this longer. We want you to do. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it the way that it needs to be done. And I'm going to do it right. If you don't want it done right, then find somebody else. And guess what? They never found anybody else. I was always a person that did it. So I've always focused on the value, not the time. Number three, it's easy for us to underestimate the contribution that we're making on anything that we do. And we tend to prioritize other things in front of ourselves. And so one of the things that I've always done is I've always prioritized myself and I've always paid myself first. When you get a bunch of money, it's easy to say, I want to go out and pay these bills. I want to go buy something nice for somebody. I want to go and do something. But then what about you? And the reason that you're getting whatever it is that you're getting, and let's just say if it's financially, it's because of something that you did. But why are you paying everybody else instead of paying yourself? I went through a lot of years in my life where I paid everybody else but me. And so Everybody else had what they need. Everybody else was happy. Everybody else was financially satisfied. But guess what? I was struggling. I wasn't able to do the stuff that I wanted to do and so on. So that created a bunch of angst and consternation for me. 
And even though I was being successful in accomplishing the things that I wanted to accomplish, I didn't feel like I was being successful because I wasn't able to do some of the things that I needed to do. And so what I started to do, and I made a commitment to myself, is I'm going to pay myself first. And paying myself first isn't always financial. Sometimes it's just doing something that I want to do. Sometimes after a, a long project, I might want to go and just relax. I might want to go and play golf. I might want to go and be by myself. I might want to go and talk to my friends because the most valuable things in the world are not money. But if you're paying yourself, then what you're essentially doing is you're giving yourself something of value that is important to you. Um, for some of us, it's money. I'm not saying money's not important, but when you look at the top 10 things in your life, besides being a tool to get to buy things, money's not that important because there's a lot of unhappy rich people out there. Trust me, I know a few of them. But I always make it a point to say, what is it that I want out of this? And let me pay myself. If I get some money, let me put some money away. Let me save some money. Let me put some money into a bank account. Let me put something away for a rainy day. But I always pay myself first. And I, I suggest that take a look, a deep look at your life and, and where all of your resources go, whether it's your financial resources, whether it's your emotional resources, whatever those resources are, and where are those resources going? And I'm not saying that you make your kids go hungry or you don't take your wife out to dinner or whatever the case is, your spouse out to dinner. But what I am saying is, are you taking care of yourself? Because if you're not taking care of yourself, then everybody else is going to be jumping up and down for joy, but then you're going to be fighting that, that, that quiet struggle inside. And that quiet struggle inside is more difficult than any other struggle that anybody else can put upon you. Number four, I've always had a growth mindset and never had a fixed mindset. I'm always looking at how can I improve? How can I be better? What's next? Now, I want to be careful with this one because it's really easy to get caught into what I talked about before in an earlier video, that trap that creates the propensity for anxiety because you're focused too far in the past. But what I will say is life is a constantly evolving process. And as such, you want to be evolving with it. What works today may not work tomorrow. What got you some extra dollars today may not work tomorrow. I had a situation once where when I was a recruiter, there was another company across town that was laying off all of their engineers. So I was happy as pie because I thought I was going to be able to hire all these engineers. Well, the problem was I was hiring engineers to work on the internet operating system and these were engineers that were coming out of a mainframe environment that never allowed themselves the opportunity or never took the opportunities to learn new technology. So then they became dinosaurs. And as we continue to age and we continue to move forward through life, technological advances, societal advances, we can't allow ourselves to, to stay stagnant. And so one of the things that I always focus on was how do I continue to improve myself every single day? And I'm not saying that I go out and, I, and do a bunch of stuff every day. Uh, I know there's a lot of cliches about people doing different things every day, and I, I'm not that guy. But what I do say, is there a way for you to improve yourself, to do things different? Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. One time, and I, I think I mentioned in an earlier video, I, after my dad had a stroke, I went to go visit him. And he said to me, did you eat breakfast today? And I said, no. He says, why not? And I said, because I never had. And he said, just because you've never done that before doesn't mean you can't start now. And it's like that for a lot of us. Sometimes the, the growth mindset is trying something that you haven't figured out or that you haven't tried before. A lot of people will say, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because I never have or whatever the case is. But sometimes it becomes important or incumbent upon us rather to put ourselves in situations where we have the opportunity to learn some new things. Because if you don't take the opportunity to learn new things, then guess what's going to happen? You're never going to learn any new things. And what you find a lot of people, particularly people in my age bracket, they have hopes and dreams, but they never gave themselves the opportunity to, to do that. I think about the fact that I'm retired now. Well, 10 years ago, 
when I started putting money away and really thinking about the opportunity to retire, at that point, the retirement picture wasn't even possible. I wasn't necessarily thinking I was going to be retiring early, but I knew that at some point I didn't want to have to go in and work anymore and I was going to have to do something. So I started to educate myself and figure new things out. The ways that I save, I try to find different ways to put money away, put money in savings. And so uh, I, I went from having a savings account to having a money market account to investing in some bonds for longer term growth because of the differences in the environment. But I didn't know all these things when I started. But what I did is I constantly educated myself. I constantly, as they say, sharpened the saw. And I, I was constantly sharpening the saw. And so if you want to be successful and you really want to find success, one of the keys that I was able to do was I was never allowing myself to get into a fixed mindset. It was always growth. It was always how can I be better tomorrow than I did today, than I was today? And there's people, I was, it's funny, I was talking to somebody not long ago, and I was telling them that the person that I am today is different than the person that they last experienced because I've evolved since then, and there's things that I've learned, some things that I learned that worked, some things I learned that didn't work, and it was all because I allowed myself to get there. And sometimes it's scary because you don't necessarily know what's behind door number three, but the reality is, is most of the time, if you're, if you're, uh, motivations are, pu are pure and you're doing what you're doing for the right reasons, you may not get to where it is you think you're going to go in the same uh, profile or in, in, the, in the exact way that you think you might, but you're going to turn out in a better place than you were today because even if you fall flat, you now know that if I go through door number three, I'm going to fall flat. Number five, I, I harness the power of delayed gratification. I can't tell you enough how important it is to balance today's needs or today's wants with the future's needs. If you really go back and think about and, and look at your situation today, and, and this would require you to be really honest with yourself. And that's a hard thing to do sometimes because you can tell everybody else what you want them to know. But being honest with yourself is a really difficult thing. But if you're really honest with yourself and you're saying to yourself, well, you know, Sabado, I'll never be able to retire. How much of that is because of the environment that you're in? And how much of that is because of the environment that you created? How much stuff do you own that you can't afford? How many credit cards do you have? How many things do you have because you thought it was going to be something that impressed others? How many things do you have now that you wish you hadn't bought? All of those things happened because in the moment, they felt right. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But one of the things that I was always focused on was my delayed gratification, making sure that I didn't just focus on what I want to do today, but balancing that. Because to say, don't do what you want to do today so that we can have a better tomorrow. Well, what happens if you get hit by a bus tomorrow? So I get it. But to balance that and say, I'm not going to go and buy the $100,000 car. I might go and get a $40,000 car because I can afford the payments on it, but I'm going to take that extra three, dollars $400 that I would have spent on that $100,000 car, and I'm going to put that away. I'm going to invest it. I could do something cool if I take this job here instead of going to college. And I know it's easy to think about kids going to college, but my best friend graduated from college not long ago, and he's 50, I don't know, 51, 52 years old. So I'm speaking to the person who, instead of going to school, tends to focus on having a social life. Instead of going to school, is focusing on spending their money doing other things, buying expensive stuff. Because what's going to happen is... Over time, you're going to look back and wish you would have done something different. I was just talking to a buddy of mine, and we were talking about drug dealers. And we were talking about how back in the 80s, there were a bunch of articles that compared the life to drug de between drug dealers and college kids. It's really about the fact that the drug dealer can go and buy 
the expensive cars and the nice watches and the nice clothes. But as soon as something happens, that goes away. I'm not saying that you're going to get rich by going to school by any means. There's a lot of us that aren't rich going to school. But you do have the opportunity to hold on to what it is that you get. Nobody can take that education from you. You have the opportunity to get jobs that sure aren't going to pay you as much as a drug trafficker, but they're going to pay you enough to live your life. And nobody can take that away from you. You have a better chance of survival. And so I, I really and, and really suggest that you take the time to really appreciate and, and harness the idea of deferred gratification. And just, and just balance that. Don't go off the deep end because going off the deep end is like going on an Oprah diet. Oprah would go on these diets and they're extreme diets. She'd lose all this weight and then she'd gain it all back. It's the same thing with deferred gratification. You, you don't allow yourself to have any fun. Then all of a sudden, when the time comes, you have all the fun and then you, you lose everything that you have. So number six, I've always been focused on having multiple income streams. Now, did I always have multiple income streams? No, I didn't always have the money for it. Didn't always have the opportunity for it. But when you talk about multiple income streams, I'm not necessarily talking about having a second job. Sometimes it's about investing your money so that way your money makes returns. Every dollar that you put away should have the potential to make another dollar for you. So if you take 10% of your income and you put that away over time that 10 percent will become equivalent to the value of 100 percent of your income but it's over time that is an income stream doesn't mean you're going to make the money right away but it means that you can make the money over time if you own a home is there an opportunity to perhaps find uh, uh, uh an investment property a rental property I was looking at places in Michigan at one point, and it was an economically disenfranchised area, but they were selling houses for $10,000. So then I had the joke that I could go buy a whole city block, refurbish the city block, and then rent those out, and probably rent the houses out for a few hundred bucks a month, and I'd make money back on all the houses. Now, is that a responsibility that I wanted to take on? No. But there are opportunities like that to find other streams of income. And for some of us, Going out and driving Uber, it's a great option. I, I would never say anything negative about a person going out and doing something to feed their family or make a little bit more money because I think we all need to do something. But if, if investing, you may already be in your 401k. Um, if you are getting your 401k from work and they match you, most places will match you dollar to dollar up to 6% or 50 cents on the dollar up to 6% of your income. Well, that's income. Instead of thinking of income as being big, if you're making $50,000 a year, instead of thinking of income being another $50,000 a year, what if you made another $5,000 a year? Because that means you're making income that's 10% above the income that you were already making. So don't think about it big. Think about it small because over time what will happen is then that will snowball and that 10% will turn to 20%, turn to 30% and eventually become 100%. But I've always focused on having multiple streams of income. How can I find ways to have my money make more money? Or is there a way for me to make additional money through a side hustle or something like that? Stay away from um, get, which, get rich quick schemes. I, I have another video I talk about that. But there's a whole host, and I think we've reached, and particularly in this gig economy, we've reached a, an environment where finding new ways to make money, it's attainable. It's just a matter of going out and, and doing the work. So I wanted to keep this one nice and short for you, but I, I did want to give you six uh, mind shifts that I made and mindsets that I had that, that helped me uh, get to where it is that I am today. I, I think a lot of us perhaps are challenged with, Sabado, it's great that you were able to retire early and find financial independence, but it's out of reach. I, I can't express enough how much I thought it was out of reach until I started to actually take the baby steps to get there. And then I was able to find financial independence at the age of 51, in spite of a bunch of other life challenges. Because trust me, there's a whole host of challenges that I haven't spoken to and I, I will speak to at some point. And if you have a specific challenge that you're having that you want to discuss, let me know in the comments. I, I, I listen to, I review all the comments. I respond to all the comments 
And I try to meaningfully put content around comments that I could build out in, in that way because I think you would be surprised at how much we have in common relative to our experiences. It, it seems like a lot would be different, but it's not. If you found this helpful in any way, I would ask that you take a moment to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share this with your friends. Share it with people that would be interested in just some information that will help them level up their situation. Um, I, it's never my expectation that all of you retire at 51, but it is my expectation that you live your best life. And the purpose of this channel is just to help provide information that may inspire you based on my journey. Because folks, with, with all of you out in the YouTube universe, I wish I knew each of you personally so I could tell you my story. And I have another video that maybe I'll try to link to this one that talks about my journey from A to Z, but it's it's down there. But it, it was humble beginnings and, and a lot of work and a lot of perseverance. And I was able to, to finally do that. So on that note, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.